anything so nebulous could be said to happen. It was nearly 1100, and in the records department where Winston worked, they were dragging the chairs out of the cubicles and grouping them in the center of the hall, opposite the big telescreen, in preparation for the two minutes' hate. Winston was just taking his place in one of the middle rows, when two people, whom he knew by sight but had never spoken to, came unexpectedly into the room. One of them was a girl whom he often passed in the corridors. He did not know her name, but he knew that she worked in the fiction department. Presumably, since he had sometimes seen her with oily hands and carrying a spanner, she had some mechanical job on one of the novel writing machines. She was a bold-looking girl of about 27, with thick dark hair, a freckled face, and swift athletic movements. A narrow scarlet sash, emblem of the junior anti-sex league, was wound several times around the waist of her overalls, just tightly enough to bring out the shapeliness of her hips. Winston had disliked her from the very first moment of seeing her. He knew the reason. It was because of the atmosphere of hockey fields and cold baths and community hikes and general clean-mindedness which she managed to carry about with her. He disliked nearly all women, and especially the young and pretty ones. It was always the women, and above all the young ones, who were the most bigoted adherents of the party, the swallowers of slogans, the amateur spies, and nosers out of unorthodoxy. But this particular girl gave him the impression of being more dangerous than most. Once, when they passed in the corridor, she had given him a quick, sidelong glance, which seemed to pierce right into him, and for a moment it filled him with black terror. The idea had even crossed his mind that she might be an agent of the Thought Police. That, it was true, was very unlikely. Still, he continued to feel a peculiar uneasiness, which had fear mixed up in it as well as hostility whenever she was anywhere near him. The other person was a man named O'Brien, a member of the inner party and holder of some post so important 